Hello folks, welcome to another video, it's set in Hogwarts Legacy, and this is gonna, a short video just about uh, building in your vivariums, some ticks and tricks and techniques when building. So this is one of my vivariums, and this is the first one you get. Before you even start building, it might be a good idea, depending on how heavily populated your vivarium is. I think this one is full. It's fully crittered out. Let me see now. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> That's a good way of getting them to go away. Yeah, I've still room for more more critters here. But your critters get in the way of your building. If you're trying to put something down, a tree or the structure. So, so how many species have I got here? There's Pafskin, Jabanol, Mooncalf. And whooper, so I've got all the all four allowable species. You're not allowed more species than four. I could get out of the bag, the collecting bag, the newt case, newt's commander case, and just put them in the bag, and they'll be safe in the bag until you finish building. Because they will get in the way. Let me see now. I'll go into my building inventory. What have I got here? I'll say, for instance, I wanted to put down. I haven't got a great choice of trees. And some of the trees are actually starting to glitch out. Let's see now this large gnarled tree or the twisty one. Ancient tree. Which is the twisty one? You see the orange area, that's the ground coverage of this particular item. If, you, if you're playing on PC, then I'm sure there's a, a mod which does away with that. It allows you to put things pretty much anywhere. But also the size. Size matters. So you can change the size of your thing. Small tree, that's as small as it'll go. But you see how the... Only when the, the, the square is white can you put it down. Orange, you can't, and you can see the areas of conflict which prevent you from putting it down. And I wish there was a way of switching that off. L2 hold to disable snapping. Well, hmm, it disables snapping, but hmm, that's hardly useful. Really. You still can't put things in certain areas. And this is the tree at its smallest size. Size matters, eh? <laughs> uh, I 
Wait, you can see how I've been playing with with size for some of the structural objects. For instance, that arch, that arch there, is the same structural model as that one there, just a different size and turned around. Turning around, you can see a different face of the structure. You see the pointy spire bit is at the front there. And here, I've turned it around so it's at the back. And you can see a different face, the flatter face. And similar to these turrets on columns. They have eight faces, they're polygonal, which is good. So you turn them around and you're seeing a different face. So it doesn't look like the same structural model just reproduced. Because you're seeing a different face, it looks like a different construction. The same the same structure effectively, but you move the move it around so that the vines and creepers and that wear and the stone is showing differently, so it looks like an entirely different piece and not an identical piece. Which is an aid to realism. Because in reality, you wouldn't have identical creepers and plants and so on. Even if they're cloned, they wouldn't be identical. So even though the, you see the pattern of creepers on the roof there, and the way it is there, well, it doesn't look the same because it's turned. I've turned the object. So even though it is actually the same because it's the same structural model, just larger, it looks different. Which is more natural. In nature there's infinite variety on just about every theme. So you just don't just plonk things down in the same place. Turn them. So you're looking at a different face. These trees, you know, so that's the same tree model as I've used, well, in quite a few places. There, there, that's the same one as that. But I've changed the size of it and turned it. So you're looking at a different, different side of it or a different scale. So it looks like a, a different plan and not just the same model. For instance, I'll just stick down a couple of examples. This structure, or maybe this structure. Here's a square object. And you notice how each face is different. So you could have four of the structure sitting next to each other, but you don't want to just plock it down side by side like that. Because you're just looking at the same the same face. becomes blatantly obvious that's the same the same piece just reproduced but you take the thing and rotate it you just turn it once and you've got a different face on that side so it looks like a different structural piece. So 
So I rotated that first one once. So that's the face that's showing there. I rotate it again. And you see how it's an entirely different face. It looks different. The arrangement of plants, the, 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 the wear and damage, the patterning of the stonework is different. Even to that one there, which is showing shields. It has shields, pretty much the same shields, but they're different types of wear and tear and damage on the, the structure. And because it's got four, four faces, four sides, you see that? That's the same face as I've used before there, but I turn it again, and it's a different face, you see, different, different plant matter. So even though it, they're all identical blocks, by rotating them they look like they're, they're different, a variety. No matter which angle you see them from, they're showing a different face. I'll put my way, I don't really... I want them there. I'll go to another vivarium and show you what I've done there. Now, which vivarium shall I go to? This one, the beach one. And you can create quite dramatic structures. sort of triumphal arch type structure. And again, that's the same structural model as that, but done on a different scale. And used again there. You'll be familiar with all these piece hairs. Where a structure is flat, there's a, a limit to how many faces you can have. For instance, these bits of fence here. I saw people putting them down and they just bang, bang, bang. And you're seeing the same face. But it's actually got two faces. So instead of the, a repeating pattern of the same face, you can turn it around. See the other side. So even though they're identical pieces, they don't look identical because you've created
increase the, the variety. My creatures are being a bit annoying there. Demanding grooming, they need to be given some attention. Statues. It's the same. That is the same identical statue to that one, but it looks different because I've turned it. So it's facing a different way. You're seeing a different side of it. It does annoy me that you can look under it, that it's not sitting properly on the ground. It's hovering there. And that again is something you can sort out if you if you're playing this on PC. There are mods for that sort of thing. But as yet, I don't know of any tricks and techniques to deal with that here on the PS5. Moonstone. So of course, you can climb about on all your structures. Nice viewing deck up here. Yeah? And the structural components and decorations, various sculptures and so on. You find them rather randomly. It's not like you can go to a certain location and find a certain structure. In fact, for instance, there's a box up there when you get this vivarium. Like all the other vivariums, the other three vivariums, there are three boxes in each. Each box contains a, a structural component. So it's fairly random. It could be anything. So there's one of the boxes, so that box might contain pretty much any one of these things. This tower, for instance, I didn't find it here. I found it as an open world, just opening a, a box. It could be a, a box in a house in Hogsmeade or one of the the villages. It could be a box in the castle itself. I can't actually remember where I found it. And it doesn't matter because if you're playing this and you open the same box, you'll find something different probably. There's another structure I built on the beach. Again, this this particular structure has because it's quite flat. Only really has two two faces. Well, it's, it's got four faces, but it's the broad faces. There are only two, and there are two narrow faces. So I've got a different face facing facing the viewer. And here again, a different face facing the viewer. So it's more believable. There's more variety. And different scales of objects. This is quite a 
a simple structure really. Less is more sometimes. I'm endeavouring to make it symmetrical, kind of four-way symmetry. Each of the four faces is more or less the same, except on this side where it's got the staircases going up. And where the, the protruding balcony there is capped off with one of these arches. PC and the mods allow you to close the gaps. You can. There are mods that allow you to push these objects into each other so they can overlap or inter intersect. But unfortunately, console users don't have that. So you're going to be stuck with these gaps. You just have to allow for that I hope you find that vaguely interesting or, or useful. So like it if you like it. If you liked it, if you found it useful, give me a thumbs up and like the video, please. If you want to see more, you can subscribe. I'll be able to view more of my videos. I'll do a lot of videos where I concentrate on building furnishing, decorating in games games like Fallout 4 Elder Scrolls Online we're building and landscaping decorating houses structures it's very much my my forte my pleasure what I like to do in games is primarily a sort of end game activity. When you've completed everything else in the game, what's left to do? But it's great if the a game has a creative component where you can continue to play. And thanks for watching this. Petting on my creatures. Is it too far away? Yes. Thank you for watching this. 
join me again in another video if you want. If you like it, if you'd like to see what I'm doing, the creative process, or what I've created. Ta-ta for now. Cheerio.